Hello and welcome to my C-Sharp tutorial where this time I'm going to introduce you to modular programming. But before I do that I'm going to ask you to please like, subscribe and share my video especially if you enjoy my content. So without further ado I'm going to introduce you to modular programming in C-Sharp. So modular programming is breaking up a program into smaller manageable functions or modules. A function is a collection of statements to perform a task. So we call them functions in C++, subroutines in Python, methods in C Sharp and methods in Java. So reason for modular programming, you can improve main maintainability of programs and simplify the process of writing programs. Functions or methods are used when a problem can be broken down to sub-problems and a similar or identical code is needed in several points of that program. So that means less typing for you and you can reuse the code producing better quality and easier to maintain programs. If you get that bit of the program right then you're going to save yourself a phenomenal amount of time. Let's have a look at one example. So you could have a you can have a big main function like that, or you can have a small main function and smaller other fun functions or methods, basically. So you can see that it looks neater and it looks much more efficient. And then in the main, you can just call the other functions or methods. So to write a simple one, it's a simple one. We are going to do we are going to do a public static void test function and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass a string called my name as a parameter <coughs> let's speak, excuse me my apologies so I've got a parameter, my name shift squiggly brackets and then what we're going to do is we're going to do console write line and then say my name is and then we're going to do a plus to separate the quote from the variable and we're going to call that my name so we've got it but what we will need now is we will need a main function so we will need that and then what we will need is string and args for argument and then what we're going to do then is we are going to call a function test function and then pass name into a parameter so we're, pa we're going to use that my name as a parameter there so we're going to run it and yes it is C sharp so it's going to take forever to do. I'll have to report that in a moment and refresh because it's a pain in the backside when you're doing it in C, C sharp in Replit. So I'm going to click run and that should load any moment now. And there we go. It's loaded as it needs to be. So it's output at my name based on the test function. And that's an example using just one parameter. So function on essentially lines my on line eleven. We are essentially functions defined. We gave it a name test function and told what parameters it should expect to be given, so my name. Then in the main function on line 7, we've actually called it. And we set the program to run the test function and give the parameter being Mr. Daniel Bullen. Hey. Tried it, works. We can take this up, up a notch. So we can use 
more than one parameter and, fun and methods will often need more than one parameter to do anything useful so say you need to pass two functions that can mean numbers in a range or we can change the code from our last program to have a first name and surname how do we do that well I answer int so we I'm gonna change the function name to f name and then a string called s name string called s name so we got f name s name done what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna do two lots of quotes first name quote with a quote in the bracket comma name again I'm gonna run that and you will see it output in my those two param my name as based on those two parameters XC shop decides to actually load and get on with it And it's outload and it's loaded it up so we've actually got that now so it's I know it's squashed together but you can in the parameter provide the space and then it'll then it'll provide the space in when you output it so that's passing two parameters okay we can return values so say I wanted a subroutine called public static void pass check so the idea of that is is to is we're going to use we're going to use two hard coder parameters to actually do which we'll call a function pass check and it's going to check to see whether the percent marks is 60 or more so how are we going to do this I'm going to call this pass check and I'm going to do and let's say we do 30 50 70 50 shall we because one's going to be a pass one's going to be a fail okay so I'm going to run that and we'll see what we have We got fail and pass. So that is what we got there. Okay. Next, next one. We can do exactly the same, but we're going to use variables this time. And these are the variables we are going to need. So let's say we decide. To use int exam score, int exam total. So we're going to ask the user to input the exam score, and then we're going to ask him to do the total. And then, based on our user input, it's going to pass our inputs as two parameters in the pass check subroutine, not subroutine methods. We're going to run it, and we're going to see what happens. And then we're going to do a cup, do about two or three tests. Because we need to see what one for pass, one for fail, and it's important that we test our code lots and lots. So I'm going to do 20 out of 100. That's a fail. So we know it hasn't met a condition of equal of over more than or equal to 60. I'm going to type 60 because it's equal to 60, and I'm going to do out of 100. Okay, failed on that one, that's a shocker, even though the percent is supposed to be equal to 60. Okay, what happens if we decide to do 70 out of 100? 
Okay, that's unusual there. So it looks like we have to have a 60. That would say exam total being 60 to actually pass. So I'm going to do 60, and I'm going to do 60. Oh, we pass! So it's got to be 60 and a 60 to pass. Which makes no sense at all. Because we've got the percent, which is mark total. And if percent is square and now equal to 60. And there we should have it. So let's have a look and see where actually see what my worksheet is. So we define a function in C sharp in lots of different ways. So we've done, so we've finished. We're doing it. We're doing the parameters and using variables as parameters. What we can do is we're going to do a simple program we would normally do in one program and not sub programs. But I'm, I'm going to show you how to do this to show you how it works. So in the main function, I'm going to do get name. And then what we're going to do now is I am going to do a subroutine called get name. So we won't need any of these parameters. But however, we are going to need a string. So, we won't actually, because we're going to need, we can do a string here, use a name, console.writeLine, enter your name, nice and easy, and we're going to do username equals convert to string console dot read line and then what we'll need to do is we need we will need a new method called print message but we can't actually do that because we gotten we haven't got a method called that yet so this is where we need to create one. Print message or msg. And then we will need a string called username. Now that we've got one, all we are doing is literally doing a console dot right line. Username. And we are going to print out, and we are going to use username as our parameter. And we need the semicolon. Then we're going to run it. Yes, C sharp takes its time, but we we'll just have to get used to that. Or just code another language altogether. It will take a while. Just have to be patient. Okay, I'm going to stop that. As it doesn't want to know me, but it will. So I'm going to reload. Because they take such a long time to do, and I'm going to rerun that. It is never this slow. Ever. 
Yep. Just gotta give it some time. Any minute now. Ooh. Oh, enter our name. So let's say I'm going to enter my name. So what happened was, gone into the main, it's gone in, it's called the get name function. So we go into the get name function, where I've been asked to enter our name. Then it's read, it, read the string, it's read that line. And then it's gone down. It's called the print message function with the parameter, which goes into here and it outputs the username as is. So that's a little bit of a basic idea of how this program works. Okay? So we finished this bit. Okay. So what happened? So this program uses three sub programs. Get name function asks the user to input their name and return the value to the variable username, so it can be used in another sub program. So let's go down and try the first three. Below is a basic piece of code which we're going to copy and which we'll need to use as a template, which we're going to work with. So, what does the first task say to do? We copy that over. So we need to print out, my name is John, or your name, basically. So I'm going to run that, which will say my name. And that's going to load. No surprise there. It's C sharp. And it's outputted our name because we did the say my names method, which is called, which goes into this code on line 12. Hence, the console right now on line 12 is outputted. Number one done. Okay. Let's say I want to remove the public static void. If I was to remove that, the program's not going to work, so we're not even going to go there. So you can say we've done number two there. So the program won't work or do anything. But another thing we can do, we can use a loop to call say my name a hundred times. So let's try it, shall we? For int i equals naught, i is less than a hundred, i increment. Enter, squiggly brackets. We're going to drag the same my name into here. And then we're going to run it. Yep, it will take its time. And it's outputted all of that 100 times. However, we can have a little bit more fun with this. It's not in the scope of the task, but we're going to have a bit of fun anyway. Console.writeLine. Enter how many times you want your name displayed. And then I'm going to do int times equal to convert to int 32. I'm going to do console dot read line. There we go. And I'm going to change the 100 to a times. 
and that's our local variable. So I'm going to click run. Okay, so I want it displayed 10 times. There we go. So it's output then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times. Nice and simple there. So I've introduced you to methods, modular, pro and modular programming in C sharp, and we've gone through the first three tasks together. So that is how we could do it in a nutshell. I hope you've enjoyed my video and if you have please like, subscribe and share and I look forward to doing the next video for you momentarily or very soon. Thank you very much and goodbye for now.